Hello everyone, welcome to nafham.com. Today we have very exciting lesson in science, that is, absorption and the transmission of water and the mineral salts in plants. So let's get started. We all know the fact that there are very important factors needed for the plant to grow normally. They are carbon dioxide, CO2, sunlight, and water, H2O. The plant uses those components and factors to perform the famous process of photosynthesis. Through this process, the plant converts raw or simple materials in the environment into other complicated forms like starch and other carbohydrates, which are the essential forms of food for human and other animals, as well as releasing oxygen to maintain its levels in atmosphere. Someone would ask, what gives a plant the ability to perform photosynthesis and survive? Why should we put or grow plant in soil, not in any place contains only water? Simply because Allah has created living organisms from the earth that contains necessary elements such as phosphorus, magnesium, calcium, nitrogen, and so on. These elements are so essential for plants' life, as they are responsible for the formation of many components in the plant, like chlorophyll. Chlorophyll, as we know, is the green dye in the plant leaves that is responsible for receiving sunlight. So, water carries those mineral salts when entering from soil into the plant, and we call this salt solution. Now, we have to know how the root system of the plant absorbs water and salts from the soil and deliver them to other parts of the plant or the root system. Root hairs are the parts responsible for this process. If we make a cross section of a plant root, we can see root hairs which extend from epidermis. The figure also shows the cortex, endoderms, xylem, phloem vessels, and beth. But why the root system extends and subdivides throughout the soil particles as we see here in this picture? Well, there are two main reasons. Firstly, to fix the plant in soil, whatever its size or length are. Secondly, and most importantly, to cover a large area of soil so as to search for water and salts in order to perform its main role which is absorbing and raising them to other parts of the plant or the root system. In fact, the age of a root hair capillary doesn't exceed a few days, so these roots are replaced continuously. If we have a look at a root hair, we noted that it is lined from inside with a thin layer of cytoplasm and have a big vacuole. It has also a thin membrane that allows penetration of water and salt through it. It secretes also a sticky substance to be able to penetrate the soil. So, how can this simple part of the root absorb water and mineral salts from the soil? Simply, it has a character or feature or a mechanism called osmosis. Osmosis is the transmission of water molecules which carry also mineral salts. Transmission of those molecules through a semi-permeable membrane from a high concentration area of water to an area that has a low concentration of water. That's because the concentration of the solution inside its vacuole here is larger than soil solution concentration because the soil has an extremely large amount of water comparing to water concentration in the root hair vacuole. Therefore, this helps in water transmission from the soil to it by the fissure of osmosis. 
through its semi-permeable membrane. These endodermal cells on this figure regulates water crossing into a tissue called xylem, xylem vessels. Here it is a question. What is the case for mineral salts? Do they enter through the membrane with all freedom? Actually, no, they don't. Because the cell membrane has selective permeability as it allows only some salts to pass through according to the plant's needs. Here is a test tube covered by a cotton, small flowered plant, as well as water colored by a red dye called eucin. If we submerge the plant roots in that solution, we notice a red color appears on leaf petioles, roots, and the flower's petals. This indicates the role of root hairs to absorb water and deliver it to the shoot system of the plant. Here we have a simple experiment from which we will notice another function plants do. We have a growing plant in a planter covered with a bell jar and the soil and roots of the plant are covered with a fabric coated in vaseline to prevent water loss from the soil. If we leave the plant for several hours, we will observe water drops formed on the inner walls of the pearl jar. We conclude that plant leaves are the source of these water drops condensed on the inner surface of the pearl jar. This is actually due to a vital process of the plant called transpiration. Transpiration is the losing of water in the shape of water vapor from the leaves or from other green parts to its surroundings through holes in the plant leaves called stomata. This loss of water in the form of vapor occurs via widespread holes in the green parts of the plant called stomata. We see here guard cells that control the opening and the closing of the stomata according to plant needs. So when the plant need to lose water, these guard cells control the stomata to open. Okay. Stomata are located on the lower surface of leaves. The lower surface as we see in this picture is brighter and tends to yellow color but the upper surface is darker and tends to dark green color. Actually the process of transpiration is very important because it creates a boiling force that raises water to the top due to cohesion and adhesion forces and the other reasons that you will know in your next years of study. As a conclusion, we have learned and seen the bus water takes to rise or go up from the ground to other parts in the top of the plant. So we have seen the transport of water and the dissolved salts through root hair xylem vessels in the root. And then we have seen transport of water and dissolved salts inside the xylem vessels in the stem. And finally we have talked about water evaporation from stomata by the important process transpiration. Here we have some questions. Complete the following. Number A. Stomata are wide spreading on, certainly on, leaf lower surface. Root hair absorbs most water by osmosis. Root hairs has a blank age, has a short age. Plant loses water in form of water vapor in in what process? In transpiration. Root hair walls is thin. Thin walls. 
Okay, the next question. Write the scientific concept of each following statement. Number A. Transmission of water molecules through a semi-permeable membrane from an area with a high concentration of water to an area with a low concentration of water. And it is of course osmosis. B. A structure extends from root wall which absorbs water. It is root hair. C. Biological process through which plants lose water in the form of vapor. It is transpiration. Structure in plant water passes through it from root to stem to leaves. It is certainly xylem vessels. Two cells surround the stoma in the plant leaves. They are guard cells. And to this point, we have come to an end of our lesson today. Thank you for watching and keep watching other lessons on nafham.com. Goodbye for future lessons. Nafham. We learn simply.